Hello and welcome to Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Cory, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, the lambasted Luke Cutfer. What am I being lambasted for? This week, we're talking about funny feelings and divergent discomfort. But first, we got to thank all of our patrons. Thank you, all of you. And if you're not a patron, be one. And then we'll thank you. Do you not want our affection? Do you want our love? <laughs> be a patron. <laughs> I've also got a question for anyone who's watching uh, or listening. If you're watching, get down to the YouTube comments. If you're listening on Spotify, get to those comments. And if you're not on any of those things and you're elsewhere, find a bear in a cave, okay? Cut it open. Inside you will find Leonardo DiCaprio. I know it seems strange, but he likes living inside of bears. Anyway, um, tell him to break up with his 25-year-old girlfriend. Then and when he does... A bit old. <laughs> <laughs> and when he does, <laughs> she'll be devastated. She will be. She'll go to the press and we'll know... We'll know to look out for your answer. So what to do next after that? Climb the tallest mountain, kick a rock down in Morse code, and we'll figure it out. What's the question, Corey? Do you have a sensory processing disorder? Do I? You probably uh, know better than I do. I'm not sure, Luke. <laughs> I don't live inside your head. I just live in your dreams. But why don't we get into what an SPD is, a sensory processing disorder. Do you know what it is, Luke? I could take a guess, take a big old stab. Don't, don't stab anyone, but they by won't all like means it. guess. So I'm guessing it's to do with... Um, some sort of experience where textures and stuff just feel a little bit icky and scary and gross uh, in a way that it, they don't to most people. That is one aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, that's one. That's not exactly the definition that's in the DSM-5. There's actually no definition in the DSM-5, Luke, because it's not in the DSM-5. Outrage. We'll get to that towards the end. Thank you for spoiling it. But uh, sensory processing disorder is a neurological condition. Uh, it says in children, but... It's not just in children. Uh, a lot of these things, you will understand why they talk about it in children a lot in the same way that they talk about autism in children or ADHD in children. It's one of those things where we, we don't we don't really consider adults that have these issues, despite the fact that many adults do say, hey, I got, I done got this. But anyway, um, no, it's a neurological con condition wherein uh, the brain processes information from the senses, um, a bit, a bit weird sometimes. A bit, a bit odd. A bit off. A bit not mm. the way that you know a neurotypical person might process those sensory inputs. You know, uh, so it could be um, overstimulation or understimulation, over responsivity, responsivity. That's a word, yeah. Or under responsivity um, to sort of sensations. And it's any of the sort of senses. Yes, any of the. How many senses, Luke? Oh God, how many? There's at least seven. Oh, that is true. That is true. That is true. There are at 12. least seven. Well, there's eight that people often mention. Can I have you... four more. <laughs> well, it's definitely not a sense of fashion. Luke, can you name the <laughs> senses for me? Okay, so we got sight, we got mm -hmm. taste, we got hearing, we got touch, we got. I don't even know four. Uh, taste. You smell? said that already. Smell. Jesus. Smell. A sense of heat. <laughs> no, do we infer that? We probably infer that. A sense of time. No, we definitely infer that. Um, a sense of space. Proprioception. Well done. <laughs> yeah. A, a sense of style. A sense of uh, whether someone's being mean to you. No, give me the other ones. What are the other three? Two? Two. What are the other two? You've got your vestibular system, Luke. Obviously. 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 What does that mean? Which is, of course, Luke. The, say it together now. Sense, sense of, of balance. Yeah. Oh, sense of balance. Look. Yeah, yeah, wow, Corey. you got it before I even yeah. said it. Wow, well, well done. Um, and do you know another one? Not necessarily the opposite of proprioception, but I like to think of it as kind of like um, the like like a like a sister to proprioception, like where other stuff is in the world. Interoception. So um, whereas proprioception is like you know sort of your spatial awareness, yeah, right? Like where be. you are in space. Um, interoception is, you know, um, sort of internal state of your body. So I'm hungry, oh. interoception. Um, I'm thirsty. I need to go pee-pee. <laughs> interoception, baby. <laughs> That's the new Chris Nolan film, by the way. Inception 2, interoception, wherein Leonardo DiCaprio needs to go pee-pee for quite a while. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> SPD, uh, sensory processing disorder, it's not one thing. There are a few different subtypes um, and a few different sort of symptoms that go along with all of these things, but they're not mutually exclusive, bear in mind. You know, you could have a collection of them. You could pick up little bits here and there from different subtypes. You don't need to fit neatly into one single category. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about hypersensitivity and hyposensitivity. Do you know what hyper and hypo mean? I'm as? guessing they're the opposite of each other. Yeah. One is, I feel things too much. And one is, I don't feel things enough. That's, yeah, I mean, Like broadly. the one where people don't feel like heat or like pain. And they're like, they can put their hand on a stove and it doesn't hurt. I think that is a different thing. Um, an inability to sort of feel pain. Like I think it's a nociception or nociceptors is the sort of general term for pain receptors or the feeling of pain. Um, I think that's slightly different from this. So I'll go through what hypersensitivity um, might cause. So for example, a low pain threshold, uh, feeling clumsy, uh, fleeing without regard to safety. I'm just reading these out verbatim. Um, you know, covering your eyes and ears, like quite literally, you know, like, you know, you can close your eyes, but sometimes when you close your eyes, that ain't enough. Like I'm closing my eyes and I can still see all the brights of these lights that we got on us. Um, and, you know, covering your ears because you can't close your ears. Um, being picky eaters, you know, or just having like a really strong gag reflex, just gagging mm. at like anything that feels like too icky. Um, soft touches are too hard. You know, like if someone touches you gently, that's that's too much. Um, con difficulty controlling emotions, difficulty uh, paying attention, um, lots of these different things. Behavior problems as well. Actually, interestingly, a lot of these sort of symptoms kind of overlap with ADHD. So it can be misdiagnosed as ADHD. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but the opposite, hyposensitivity. So hyper meaning sort of too much or, you know, like, um, so hyper, you can hyperbole, you know, that's the sort of prefix you've got there. And hypo as in hypothermia, right? So thermia being cold, uh, temperature sort of thing and hypo meaning like sort of less or not small or not enough. Yeah. So um, that's not specifically re related to what we're talking about. I'm just giving you an understanding of what those prefixes mean, by the way. So hypersensitivity, we've just done hyposensitivity. Um, that would be um, sort of trying to find more interaction with the world around you because you can't feel enough. You know, that's a sort of general presentation of that. Um, you know, you want to get sensory feedback uh, or more sensory feedback. So um, having a high pain, a pain threshold, bumping into walls, touching things, putting things in your mouth, giving bear hugs, um, crashing into people or other things, um, n like, less concern for personal space, um, rocking and swaying. A lot of these things are, are things you'll see um, in children, but you can see these things in adults. Um, and you might also have, um, uh, in general, when it comes to SPDs, an aversion to things that are overstimulating, like loud environments, bright lights, intense smells, that sort of thing. Um, or you know, alternatively, on the, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you will uh, try and find stimulation in settings that don't stimulate you enough. Wow. Right. So these are sort of like if you think of this as a sort of spectrum um, idea, wherein you've got hypersensitivity, hyposensitivity is the other end, but also it is not um, you're somewhere on that spectrum. You can have different elements of different things. Right. These, so you can right? be hyposensitive to some things and hypersensitive to other things. Potentially, sure. Yeah. 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 I would say so. Mm. <laughs> I feel like I'm hypersensitive to the texture of mushrooms. I absolutely like that. Not me. Not saying that. That's like. I now have this condition because I don't like the texture of mushrooms, but I can't eat things with mushrooms. In. Really? Like, they, I've seen so... you eat mushrooms so many times. Yeah, begrudgingly. Is like, that... all because I'm around people who I don't want to be like, I don't like mushrooms. Um, but like, yeah, just the texture's always bugged me so much. What like a terrible vegan. I, I feel like you've not had mushrooms cooked properly. Is it like every single kind of mushroom oh, yeah. you've ever had? Yeah, if you get like great mushrooms, I will put them in my mouth and I'll enjoy the taste and then I'll swallow them whole. Mm. I'll like swallow whole mushrooms. Have you had the, like, have you gone to restaurants with like well cooked mushrooms? I have, yes, I've tried so hard and I just swallow them whole. Is this different kinds, I don't know why we're going on this tangent, but different kinds of mushrooms, like your your oyster mushrooms or or, yeah, or whatnot? Okay, them. fair I, enough. Either they're too furry or they're too rubbery and so I just swallow them all. I'm going to cook you some mushrooms and see if we can, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. If you don't like them, you have to eat them. Yeah. But <laughs> I will. Just, I'll just swallow them. No, no, I'm oh. curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. But yeah, um, that's interesting. But that that would kind of, that's where you get sort of picky eaters, right? Um, not in all cases of picky eaters, but that specific thing there, because most people, Luke, or not most people, but plenty of people, when they absolutely despise the taste, uh, the texture of something, uh, they will not eat it rather than just gulp it down <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> But not plenty of people do what you do too, and that's perfectly valid. Um, absolutely. But yeah, no, so 
picky eaters might actually have like issues with textures and smells and tastes where it's really intense and that's why you know they can't bear to eat certain foods like actually for example i cannot stand the texture of bananas like i literally um maybe i'll put this video in if i can find it but i was tried to eat a banana i was doing banana training um, on the US tour that I was on, uh, <laughs> um, what, in April 2023, and um, I cried. Wow. Yeah, I, not like intentionally, it was so overwhelmingly horrid to try and eat the banana that I cried. It was three bites, I was getting one more bite every day. I think three was my max, honestly. Like just my body could not handle it. And this has been my entire life. Like I like the taste of bananas, I love the smell, I like banana flavored things, I like banana bread. I just cannot stand the texture of a banana. It's horrid. I kind of get it. I mean, like, I quite like a banana in a mm. good in a in a good state. But if it's like it's kind of a knife's edge, like a too far either way, they are actually quite revolting. Any banana, the perfect Any banana, banana right. would make me sick. What about little banana sweets? Oh, those are fine. Great, okay. love little banana sweets, nice. little banana chips. Yeah, but I don't think that's what the patrons who voted for this episode, which is why we're doing it, by the way, didn't mention that up top, but. Our patrons vote on episodes, and we're doing one of them right now. Uh, I don't think that's what they necessarily uh, came to this episode for. So should we talk about different types of sensory processing disorder? Yes. Do you want me to try and guess what they are? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, fine. Yeah. No, no, no. I just, I mean, I, you, do you want to give it a go? You're no. not going to get it. Yeah. No, I no, don't actually, want to. Actually, you might get one. No, I won't. It starts with a D, and then a Y, and then an S. Dysphoric. And then a P. Dysphoric. Then a R. Dysphraxic. Dysphra... Dysfra Where are you getting the H? Dispa disparic? Dis Dispra Dyspraxic. Dyspraxia? Yeah. Yes, well wow. done, Lou. All on my own. No clues. <laughs> <laughs> that was physic you got so sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this is becoming very bonus episode like which is um very fitting because our patrons get bonus episodes you should go ahead and join our patreon um but no um it's interesting uh, someone commented on a lateral uh, video the other day we were on lateral with tom scott go ahead and check that one out um saying luke got really stuck on this one interpretation of the question and carried it through the entire time i think it was we were talking about a mountain and you were like conquered a mountain that must mean someone owns the mountain now and the entire time <laughs> someone you know you're talking about like the entire time you were like trying to figure out how the set how the question made sense in terms of someone owning a mountain <laughs> um and someone pointed that out in the comments and i was so close to being like yeah, that's a very Luke thing to do. <laughs> to just like you hone in on, like you were like, disfur, disfur. You honed in on that pH there. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not letting it go. So dyspraxia, yeah, that is one type. But we'll get to that at the end. That's a little, put a pin in it. Save that one for later. That's your little treat. That's your little dessert there. Um, but the first type of SPD, so there's three types, and some of those types have um, different subtypes. So it is, there's lots to go through. Pay attention. Okay, does everyone pay attention? So the first type is sensory modulation. There are three subtypes of this. The first one is sensory over-responsivity. Um, so someone uh, with that uh, might go out of their way to avoid sensory stimulation. So, you know, covering your ears and eyes, as we sort of mentioned earlier. Um, so that's essentially a sensitivity to sensory inputs. Everything is too much. It's it's too many, it's too, ah, it's overwhelming, right? Under-responsivity is the opposite of that, right? Um, wherein, like, you don't necessarily notice what's going on around you because you're just not sort of noticing your sensory inputs, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So um, you could be, uh, if, it's, if it's really loud or if it's really hot or whatever, you're just kind of, like, not registering that. Um, uh, you're just not noticing, really. Uh, the third subtype would be sensory craving. Can you can you imagine what that might be? Yeah, you're craving sensory input. But how would how would that present? Well, like going out of your way to like touch stuff or like make like go to noisy places, like go to like a music festival or like stroke furry things or like uh, punch yourself or like so, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting. So like, um, yeah, kids uh, that have this are sometimes referred to as like bumper and crashers because they'll like mm. run into stuff and just like they're seeking like sensory input mm. you know like even if it's as simple as like you know climbing trees or you know, as i said running into people but it's like more and more and more and more more because you know sort of you're under um under stimulated essentially right mm. and you want mm. more sensory input um so that's all within the first uh sort of type 
of um, SPD, which is sensory modulation. And those were the three subtypes there. So the first subtype is sensory over-responsivity, then it's under-responsivity, and then the last one is sensory craving. Now, I wonder, um, I, I'm going off memory here, I watched the documentary for Dan Radcliffe's stunt double, ah. who was like injured very badly whilst mm -hmm. filming and uh, is now in a wheelchair. And he was talking about how Oh, God, it's, I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm going to butcher this. But basically, what I'm getting at is I wonder if like stunt doubles, some people in stunt double work might be this, like the sort of sensory craving, because you, you're there's so much stimulation when being a stunt double. Mm. And if you're maybe not feeling pain as much as you would, um, I think one of the guys in there in that documentary that we interviewed talked about from a very young age, he just didn't feel fear and he didn't really feel pain. Mm. And that that led him into a career where like most people would be scared and either either they would feel pain or they would be anticipating feeling pain. And he just, for whatever reason, just didn't have that. Yeah, that's, that's I'm so glad you brought that up, right? Um, so the first, uh, that, that was all under the first type, right? We're now moving on to the second type of sensory processing disorder or the second category. Um, that would be a sort of difficulty with sensory discrimination or learning with your senses, right? So you, it's difficulty um, sort of making judgments using your senses. Mm. So even if you, you know, if we do a task every day, right? For example, you get the sort of idea of the way, of a knife that you use every day. You know how it feels in your hand. Now, if you were to use the another knife, it would feel a little bit different, right? Um, and it wouldn't necessarily be as comfortable as the knife that you use every day because there's different weights, there's slightly different things to them, right? Now, someone with sort of um, so that sort of difficulty with sensory discrimination um, might not be able to sort of kind of figure out, okay, well, how much does this thing weigh? Like, how much do I need to, how much effort do I need to put into this? How much effort do I need to push down on this, right? Like, how, what, like, you know, I mean, um, if you're lifting something up, for example, not necessarily being able to sort of know, evaluate, like, how heavy the thing is and so how much force you should put into it. Right. Right, which is interesting, right? Because, like, if you think about it, there's so many things that you don't think about constantly, like how much effort you put into doors. For example, I often seem like I can't open heavy doors because I do not want to break the doors. I'm not even joking. Like, I, I would, would break things often and so i'm like okay i just got to be careful because if you put in too much force on something it will just break so like a door that isn't even too heavy but like is maybe a little bit stiff i'm like i don't want to put in too much this and is just the weirdest flex i've ever heard I, it's not that i'm that strong I have to be careful with doors or i'll break the doors <laughs> it's not that i'm strong it's that i'm just stupid okay <laughs> we're all strong enough to break a door but we're not all stupid enough to do it. I don't know that I'm strong enough to break a door. You're definitely strong enough to break a door. How would I break a door? Okay, look, we'll get a door and you can break it, okay? Thank you, okay. Right, at some point, we'll find a door and you can break the door. Patreon bonus clip. <laughs> God, Luke breaks door. If we get enough on Patreon, yes, yes, <laughs> we can We can stop paying salaries and just start buying doors. One door a month for <laughs> a Luke to break. <laughs> doors are actually very expensive, Luke. Works one door a month. Ding a ling ling, is that the ad bell? I thought it was my tinnitus, but it turns out it's the ad bell. What is he ringing for this week, Luke? Well, today the show is being sponsored and supported, as always, actually, by our Patreon. What? A Patreon? Is that where people can go and pay for trees on something? That is not what it is. Maybe we'll do that as a perk one day. But for now, the Patreon is a place where people can go, people who love this show, like you, for example, can go and support the show existing. It's very complicated and expensive to make this show, and our patrons help it to exist. So we think you are very lovely for doing that. Yeah, if you've ever noticed anyone's name scrolling through at the end of a Psy Guys episode, that's because they're our patrons, and we want to thank our patrons for helping us make this show. So to do that, we give them a whole bunch of things. Perks like bonus episodes and a different show and, and other things. What else do we give them, Luke? They get to submit topic ideas for the show for Curry to consider, and then also those topic ideas go into a vote that is voted on every month by our patrons only. So they basically get to control us once a month. So if you really love Sci guys, and you're not content with just sitting back and watching us natter on. You want to have a hand in the show? You want to be a part of it? Go ahead and sign up to our Patreon because you can be a part of this show. Shall we get on with that show? We shall. So it's like not using your proprioception, you know, your sense of space and whatnot um, to figure out how much something might weigh and then, you know, like then putting in the right amount of force um, or just like not 
using enough and so not being able to do the thing um yeah it can be difficult obviously like that could be really embarrassing right just fumbling mm. with things or like splashing things around if you're like trying to pick up a like a glass and like oh that was too much whoopsie daisy like it's just it's being clumsy right mm. but i feel like clumsiness we don't often think of that from the inside we just see it from the outside a lot of like a lot like um sort of adhd we've spoken about this um on the podcast before wherein you know um people view adhd kind of from the outside rather than considering what it feels like from the inside and this can kind of highlight that if someone's clumsy they may have, you know, some kind of sensory processing disorder. Um, because, you know, the, I mean, not to say that everyone that's clumsy absolutely has some kind of SPD, but that's like, that's how that can manifest, right? You can just seem very clumsy, but the truth is that you're just not really able to sort of judge um, basing, based on your senses um, as well as other people can. Which, to be fair, how else would you judge it? Like, it's yeah. not like you can, like, weigh an object before you pick it up and be like, right, that's how much muscle tension I need to use. Yeah. Um, you do it by judging the weight, and then your muscle just sort of automatically responds based on that. So, yeah, that's really difficult. It's, it's difficult. If you're right? just, like, constantly over-accelerating objects. Um, like, if you picked up... I suppose that the thing that anyone who doesn't have this would do, like, to understand is imagine someone, like, filled a suitcase full of bricks, mm. and then go you to pick it up, and you knew how heavy that brick, those bricks were. And then without you realizing, they took all the bricks out. And then you picked up the suitcase again. You'd like throw the suitcase in the air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but also imagine, right, like someone filled a suitcase with bricks, right? And every day you went to pick up that suitcase. And you just knew that it was full of bricks, right? Now that's, that would be like, that would be like basically using your senses and like understanding how much the thing weighs. Especially if you're doing it like every single day. But yeah, like adding to that, imagine if someone say filled that suitcase with bricks, right? And you picked it up every single day. But every day you forgot that there were bricks in the suitcase. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what this is, right? Like not being able to retain like that sort of sensory information of like, not even just like trying to pick it up and being like, oh, this is how much it is. And then going, it's like not even being able to remember something you've done every day, um, how much that yeah. is. Yeah. So that was the second category. And then the last category um, is sensory based motor disorder. And this has two subtypes. Um, the first one is postural disorder. Um, so that's just difficulty with movement, sort of generally sort of presents as being sort of clumsy, like moving in a kind of clumsy sort of way. Um, can have difficulty with like sort of being stable, sort of like, you know, balancing oneself. But yeah, also it can sort of present as like a difficulty with like using your hand on the other side of your body. Right, so if you think of your body as being split down the middle, mm. right, your right hand on the left side, like crossing the midline, that oh. like difficulty with things like that, um, you could be tripping over your feet, difficulty like sort of all, with, like balancing and all of that sort of stuff, right? Like that kind of clumsiness can be a sensory processing disorder. And if you think about it, it's like sort of issues with your sort of balance and your proprioception. If you don't know where your body is in space. It's very easy to trip over your feet. They're so close together, and in my case, they're quite big. Well, the thing you said about using your hand on the other side of your body, so like if you put your right-hand side on the left side of your body, and mm. then suddenly it became more difficult to use it, that sort of, it sort of reminds me of the, the episode we did on split brains, mm. where like for like various reasons, a, sci like a, a, a doctor or a surgeon or something might like cut your brains in half. So you Very basically... much a surgeon thing to do, do you know what I mean? No, they're, just cut, they're just cutting stuff up to see what happens. They're yeah. like, chop, chop. And not your GP, crucially, I did say. <laughs> oh, your GP goes in like, right, open up your brain. <laughs> um, what that reminded me of was like, there was this, there's this thing about that where because you then have two separate hemispheres and your like right hemisphere controls your left side of your body and your left hemisphere controls your right side of your body. And also it's not that you're Weirdly, it's not that your right hemisphere like sees out your left eye, but it's that your right hemisphere sees out the left side of both of your eyes. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, and that almost sounds like, I'm, I'm absolutely speculating here, but it almost sounds like there's also difficulties like with the signal crossing across the hemispheres, right? Because if you are, if your, if your right hand is on your left side of your body, then the side of your body that is perceiving the hand is different to the one it no that normally perceives that hand. Does mm. that make sense? I get what like you're saying, you yeah. Like you swap across. And if you don't have any problems with the signal going across your two brain hemispheres, then that won't be an issue. But if you do, then that will be a real issue because you've swapped. It's like, it's like passing 
a, a task from one computer to the other. Mm, no, yeah, no, I get you. Potentially, yeah. I think like generally this is viewed through the sort of lens of the sensory information. Do you mm. know what I mean? As in like um, proprioception and um, sort of balance. I can't remember the longer name that I said earlier, but you can skip back if you're watching. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, but like that is a really interesting sort of um idea there. Yeah, just occurred to me. No, so moving on to the second subtype of sensory-based motor disorder, uh, that would be dyspraxia. Remember that one from earlier? I remember dyspraxia. So that's difficulty planning and executing actions. So um, you might have difficulty sort of like tying your shoelaces. People mm. with dyspraxia can struggle with that. Um, like someone I know has dyspraxia and it's just like, sometimes they just have real difficulty just doing things. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like, and like spilling f things on them. Mm. Like, honestly, like it's like it's just difficulty just carrying out sort of tasks. So um, the example uh, I've got in my notes is, you know, let's say you've got a child um, with, who's got dyspraxia. Um, if you give them a box and say, like, do something with it, they won't necessarily know what to do. Um, whereas a neurotypical kid might say, like, I can climb in the box, I can go under it, I can push it. Um, uh, the, this sort of person with dyspraxia might have difficulty trying to like come up with an idea of like, like an action oh, to wow. do um but yeah so like new situations require new motor planning and motor planning is a, is difficult there right yeah. basically like sort of like okay i'm going to do this thing and then like executing on that action yeah i mean we could really do an entire episode on dyspraxia to be honest i literally found out in researching this that dyspraxia was like just a subtype uh, well, it's like a sort of um a subcategory of a category of SPD. Yeah, it's crazy how much we take that stuff for granted as well. Like when I tie my shoelaces, I don't even like I don't even know how I do that. I just go like execute shoelace code and my hands just do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, so like weird. actually like imagine imagine trying to teach a child to do things and you're like, wait, how do how do I how, I how do, do I do this thing? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like just tie your shoes. Like I don't know how. Well just just do it. You know? <laughs> you just look at your shoes. And, and then, then they, it's done. And then they're tied. Like, <laughs> that's, what it, that's what happens with me. Yeah, like, how do you ride a bike? All right, well, you, first you get on it, and then you're just, uh, and then you're riding it. Step two, ride and, a bike. And then just don't stop. <laughs> like, yeah. that's it. Just, just Until you do. Yeah. And then, In which and, case, you do. And then you're, then you're done. But stop safely. That's it. There you go. How do you stop safely? Uh, you just, oh, step one, stop safely. Yeah. You, well, step one, you, you, I guess you brakes, and then step two, you're, you're done. You're done. <laughs> I mean, I, get, I guess I could think this through. You know, you're like, if you want to get on a, ride a bike, you got to get on it, right? And then you put one of your foot, feet uh, on the pedals. But it'd pedals. be like that thing you did that, you play that trick on us a while ago where you were like, put your hands up in the air and imagine you're driving a car. Oh, yeah. Now imagine you're turning to the right and now imagine you're stopping turning to the right. Oh, no, and, no, yeah, yeah. Switch lanes. Yeah. yeah. And we all don't do the little extra corrective other way turn that you do. So you go like yeah. right and then you come back to center and go a little bit left to straighten up and then right and then center again. Yeah, but you do it like just unconsciously when yeah. you're driving a car. So what Luke's kind of uh, describing there is um, I, we were talking about unconscious actions and this was a long, long time ago. I think probably maybe before we were in this studio, who knows, maybe when we just started in the studio. But um, yeah, the idea is that you don't like it's really difficult to um, sort of describe some actions that you do. And that thing there, yeah, is that like naturally when you're um, switching lanes in, in, a, you know, in a car, you turn right um, to switch the lane and then you have to overcorrect so that your car turns back straight. But what most people will do is just turn straight yeah, because they don't realize. Yeah, absolutely. So I just wanted to clarify for anyone that wasn't sure. Um, also, I don't know if I was listening to the entire thing. Um, <laughs> I support you and I value what you have to say. <laughs> I just don't necessarily listen to it. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, so that those are the sort of subtypes and the different types and whatnot. Um, can you imagine any causes for sensory processing disorder? I'm going to guess injuries. Wow. Yes. And genes. Oh, denim. Interesting. Yes, too tight. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm going to guess there's lots of different ways of this happening. Sometimes you can be born with it. Sometimes you can be the result of an injury. Sometimes it could be the result of something else, like, uh, I don't know, taking some drug that makes your whole nervous system kind of fried. Uh, maybe. I don't know about that last one. Um, I made it up. That's why. Yeah. 
Make sure you say that because people are listening to this podcast for science. Yes, I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> I, can I just say, I'm going to take a little break in this episode to say anyone that's commenting saying, I wish you guys were more like this other person that that, that talks about more science. Watch the other person. We, we, like, you know, that we, yeah. we, we, we do exactly the amount of science that we want. We're just giving you options. Yeah. If you or, don't well, like this option, go <laughs> choose your option. Yeah. Weirdo. I like, it's like this podcast, I would like it more if it was not this podcast. Yeah. Uh, then I don't think you like this podcast. And that's okay. Um, because I don't make it for any of you. I make it for me. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. But no, uh, I also make it for our patrons who we love. Anyway, um, back to uh, the causes. So yeah, you're pretty you're, you're pretty much uh, spot on there. Oh, God. Other than the bit where I said that some you take some drug and it makes your spine fried. <laughs> I suppose I don't listen to you enough, um, and I should continue not doing that. But can you not get an SPD as like a result of like a side effect from a medication or a treatment? Uh, look, man, I don't have that in my notes in front of me, so i Probably I'm, not. <laughs> why don't you just leave that and ignore it, and we'll carry on. So, um... It could be present sort of from birth, as you were saying, uh, premature birth or low birth weight. Also, it could be um, potentially lack of sensory stimulation in childhood um, or overexposure to certain chemicals. Those could be risk factors as well. I'm not saying that as a definite. It's just a potential. Like, as far as I'm aware, this um, this isn't really as well studied as it could be. Um, also, uh, abnormal brain activity could change how the brain responds to stimuli and how it like sort of interprets senses. Uh, but then also it's connected to different sort of um, disorders or different sort of conditions um, like autism, autism spectrum disorder, um, ADHD, sleep disorders, developmental delay, and brain injury. So, you know, it's um, we don't understand a lot about this, but it is very much tied, uh, I say tied, it is very much uh, tied in the sort of public consciousness. It's tied sort of in the zeitgeist, I would say, to uh, autism particularly, right? You know, I mean, you yeah. could probably imagine like the ear covering, the eye covering, yeah. all the sort of stuff I was mentioning earlier. Interesting. So is that is that a that's a result of a of a separate SPD as opposed to part of autism itself? Uh, this is the difficulty, right? Yeah, like it's um, blurry. It's blurry. I don't actually know and there there do, there seems to be sort of like I guess a debate. Um I don't know if there's a consensus on quite what it is yeah i mean it's not in the dsm-5 or the isd-10 is it the um the icd-10 sorry um basically the dsm-5 would be the big book of uh mental disorders and the icd-10 the international classification of diseases um is basically a big book of diseases and disorders and whatnot it's not in either of those um, I have read, and you can read in the sort of references, um, a sort of, I guess, petition um, or proposal for it to be added to the DSM. And yeah, it's it's one of those murky areas where it's like it, it doesn't necessarily meet the criteria um, for its own entry. Uh, but yeah, whether it's sort of like whether it's sort of something that is just a symptom that is present amongst all of these sorts of things, it's just something that kind of would happen when... You know, there are um, issues with the, how the brain interprets senses or whether it is its own discrete disorder. I don't know. I don't know remotely enough about this topic to make any sort of statement on that. Um, and all I can say is that it's not in, the, it's not in either of those sort of uh, disease classification sort of uh, books, let's say. Um, and there seems to be some debate on it. But Again, um, I, that's all I can say because I don't know enough about this to throw in my two cents. Nice. That was very comprehensive. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I try, you know. But um, yeah, why don't we talk about the link to autism and ADHD? Because again, um, I wouldn't say that this is caused by autism. It very well could be. Who knows? Uh, but it is quite strongly linked to it in the sense that, um, you know, it, they seem to be quite comorbid. Um, in fact, it's this sort of sensory stuff is basically it goes hand in hand with autism. I think it might even be I, I can't remember the um, the diagnostic criteria of autism off the top of my head, but um, it might even be part of the diagnostic criteria. Um, I don't know. Someone in the comments can 
correct us and we'll uh, we'll give that comment a little heart. You can find it's it. It's definitely on the sort of like quizzes, like the sort of things you do online, uh, like am I artistic things. Um, it talks about senses and whether you get overstimulated by senses and things like that. That's definitely in there. It is part of the diagnostic criteria: hyper or hyporeactivity to sensory input. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, whether it's a, like how that links to autism, I'm not really sure. But then dyspraxia is its own sort of thing uh, as well. Mm. You know, um, and they're not mutually exclusive as well. I want to point out, right? Like, so you can be dyspraxic and also have um, different sort of sensory. Um, like, you know, hyper sensitivity or hypo sensitivity as well. Um, but yeah, again, let's get back into autism. So if we talk about like the sort of sensory processing in autism, like that hypo sensitivity, like as, like a lot of people with autism will say, I've got really high pain tolerance. And they probably do have a high pain tolerance, but they also have a very low tolerance for discomfort. Right. Like, I mean, I like I, I'm sure like, you know, if you know enough autistic people, you will know people that will cry because of a texture. Okay, yes, I did that for bananas, but that's my one, bananas are my one thing, okay? as uh, We all get one, I'm sure. <laughs> that's your kryptonite. That's, oh God. Bananas. Yeah, man. <laughs> what a lame superior. I'm not be. scared of bananas even, it's just, it makes me cry if I have to have more than a couple, oh God, it was gone. I'll try and smash a door and you try and eat a banana. On, a, on Patreon, I will fully, like, if maybe we'll set some kind of goal or something, but I will fully eat an entire banana for a Patreon video. Wow. I'll try. I might throw up. It was really difficult, honestly. <laughs> that, that made the video better. That's it fine. It was really tough. But yeah, no, I mean, like, we all, if you if you know, like, enough autistic people, you'll know that sort of, that's the sort of sensory needs that a lot of autistic people have. I mean, I would say, I would almost go as far as saying, like, sort of all autistic people have, right? Like, um, in terms of, like, uh, certain textures, even, like, clothes are, aren't right. And, you know, to someone else, they might feel exactly the same, but they're sort of hypersensitivity to different textures might make those feel drastically different. Um, you know, uh, this sort of uh, hyposensitivity. So like low, like, like, a, like a high pain tolerance, you know, um, not really, not really, or like um, lack of sort of interoception is something that's really common um, with autistic people as well, right? Wherein you don't recognize that you're hungry or you don't recognize that you're um, like, like, what is this? Like, you've got to like sort of figure out what the feeling is intellectually mm. and in ADHD as well you can kind of like you know um procrastinate going to the toilet or like be f so focused on something that you don't you're Eat not drink yeah well yeah you're not yeah. like you don't realize you're thirsty like I have it very often where I am so focused on something and like I've been on it all day and then I'm really hungry I'm very hungry but I'm, in compl I'm completely unaware of the fact that I'm hungry mm. until like maybe I smell some food or I start cooking and like, you know, I get that little whiff and I get, I start thinking about food and I'm not so focused on the other thing. And suddenly it all comes at once. And I'm like, I'm, Oh my God, I'm ravenous right now. I could, I could eat a horse, you know, like, so you can see these, there's sort of different, um, sort of, uh, links here, right? Um, if we talk about the uh, vestibular system, do you remember what that is? Yeah, it's the, the guys in your ears who tell you when you're wonky. That's, oh, mm, okay, that's right. Balance and equilibrium, <laughs> we can we can say. That's what I said. Um, but yeah, if we talk about autism in sort of relation to different sort of SPDs, I mean, uh, there's not a, a huge amount of data or like we don't have a huge understanding of some of these things but if we talk about like sort of olfactory and uh, gustatory so like uh smell and sort of taste that sort of thing right when it comes to autistic people uh it's like it's kind of a common commonly sort of agreed i guess it's a common consensus the people like autistic people um can be either hypo or hyper responsive to certain tastes so like really sensitive to certain smells right like um you know that that could be that could be something there um which could then result again in like picky eating so it's not just the textures it could also be the smells and whatnot right um the auditory uh stimuli if we talk about that it's also um, like it's also like quite well established in research that autistic people can be very sort of um, sensitive to different sort of sounds, but also um, enhanced pitch perception um, and, and, and things like that. These are all things that can be found in autistic people. Um, it's um, it's like it's really interesting, actually, like how sort of like how linked these things are. And when it comes to the sort of uh, question of whether they're different things. As I said, um, SPD 
it's not included in the DSM-5, it's not in the ICD-10, um, and those are the those are the, the two things that sort of diagnostic tools that are used across like healthcare across the world in healthcare. And so whether it's its own specific thing or mm. something that is a symptom. It feels like a symptom, yeah, because if it can happen, say for example, it was part of um, whatever causes autism, ADHD, and sort of that sort of umbrella of um, conditions. Um, it can also be caused by like a physical injury, right? Like a brain brain trauma injury. So like that would suggest that it's, if it can be caused by that as well, then that would suggest it's a symptom. I would imagine so, yes. But then I mean, again, like I, I mean, you can go and read um, the sort of debates that are that are happening about this, but it's really it's it's difficult to it's difficult to parse through, right? Because I mean, yeah, when you hear about SPDs, generally you'll hear about dyspraxia. Like dyspraxia is kind of considered that's its own thing, right? Mm. But a lot of the other stuff are kind of seen as just, this is a feature of autism. This mm -hmm. is a feature of ADHD. And in fact, interestingly, ADHD, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, can be sort of, people can be diagnosed with ADHD, misdiagnosed with ADHD, when actually they've got some kind of sensory processing disorder. Because, you know, um, if you think about it, they can present really similarly. Yeah, the sort it looks of like under stimulation. Yeah, well, like, like yeah. the inattentiveness, right, that you see in people with ADHD can be inattentiveness due to just not having sort of like not noticing sensory inputs, yeah. right? Um, sorry, I, I cut you off. Do you want to? Well, especially like the idea that you were saying about like running into stuff mm. um, or like uh, listening to something really loud. It feels like it's like an understimulated mind, right? Yeah. Uh, like a brain that's craving sensory input because it's not stimulated properly, which I think is, is, a, is a, a factor in ADHD as well as it sounds like sensory processing disorders. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that the sort of root cause can be different in these things while they present the same, so, yeah. right? That, that hyperactivity, for example, right? Really seeking out sensory input and hyperactivity, different kind of causes in, like, you know, with ADHD and SPD, right? Um, potentially in, in, in cases, right? But still present the same, in the mm. same sense that inattentiveness, people with ADHD aren't necessarily inattentive because um, they don't notice their um, sort of senses. Yeah. But that their brain could, is just shutting down. Yeah. But the case for <laughs> SPD, you just like don't notice that sensory input, right? And actually, interestingly, when it comes to ADHD, um, if you want to predict for more severe sensory processing problems, right? Because again, um, sensory processing uh, disorders can also um, be linked in some ways to ADHD. Again, we don't, I don't think we know too much about this, but um, if you want to predict for more severe sensory processing problems in ADHD kids, um, you can look at oppositional defiant disorder, which we've done an entire episode about, and anxiety. So if they've got, you know, ODD or anxiety, that is, that makes it more, doesn't make it more likely, but you're more likely to see severe sensory processing problems in those kids, which makes sense, right? Because like, you're probably going to be more anxious if you've got issues processing senses or sensory input. Oh, like for sure. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I think that's pretty much it. That's all we've got on it today. I mean, we've basically just gone through what it is, some of the potential causes and whatnot. But ultimately, this is something that I think needs quite a bit more study. Yeah, and whether or not it's its own mental disorder, that remains to be seen at present moment. It's kind of agreed upon that it isn't, but that could potentially change in future. Who knows? It is definitely, um, you know, sensory processing disorders. They are definitely a thing. Um, we just don't quite know enough about them uh, to judge whether they're their own thing or what specifically causes them. But I think there's just one thing left to do, Luke. It's the Quick Fire Quiz. Dun, 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 dun. Sensory Processing Disorder Edition. Well, the rules for the Quick Fire Quiz are the same as always. I'll ask one question. Look, that's one question between you and the audience. The first person to answer after finishing asking the question wins. What do they win? They win something very stimulating if they want it, and something very not stimulating if they want that instead. Fantastic. Look, my question for you is, what is one of the types of SPD? Oh, dyspraxia. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. That is correct. Well done. We've got another thing to do. Look, we've got to thank all of our new patrons. We have to thank all of our new patrons. Thank you. So a big thanks to Seva. Thank you, Dean Hoff. Thank you, Hannah. And thank you, Mikhail. Well, that is all from us. But before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with an extra special thank you to executive producers Danito and Glitch Rabbit. And thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys. Or you can find and contact us at SciGuys Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at SciGuys on TikTok too. <gasps>
Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCorey everywhere. You can follow me at LukeCuffworth everywhere. Bye. Bugger off. Bye.